Hi, I'm Paul Francis, and I'd like to show you how to record these videos, very similar to the ones Joe's shown you, only using a PC rather than a Mac. Most of the details are exactly the same, not by coincidence, but there are a few details that differ. I'm using a Microsoft Surface tablet over here, Surface Pro 3 in this case, and I can use it set up as here, which is that it's plugged into this Wacom Cintiq tablet as an external monitor. So I can write on the Wacom tablet, much as Joe showed you using his Mac. Benefit of the Microsoft Surface, however, is that I can just use it like this, take it at home, and write using the Surface pen on here. And it's much more portable and lightweight, but not to mention cheaper than this. The one thing you absolutely will need is a head-mounted microphone or a lapel microphone. This is a gaming headset, in fact, exactly the same one that Joe was using, again, not by coincidence. The benefit of this is that the microphone is always the same distance from your mouth. So as you move your head around, you always get the same volume. And also, because the microphone is so close to your mouth, the inverse square law means that it picks up you and not, for example, the conversation happening in the office next door or the uh, lawnmowers going outside. So it's much better at rejecting the background noise. Now the first software you need is something to draw on. John Close uses Windows Journal, uh, me and Joe use Sketchbook. So let's start Sketchbook up. And this gives us something we can write on. Now one trick, you need to record off the screen at the same number of pixels as you're eventually going to turn it into a movie. Anything else will give you blurring in your final image and will give you a much longer processing time. Now I normally produce videos at 720p resolution, that's the old high definition resolution, which is 1280 pixels wide and 720 tall. So what I normally do is I set the canvas size to be in width about that, which is a little bit bigger, so 1300 pixels wide. And in height, I usually make it absolutely enormous, so 4000 pixels. What this means is that the width from here to here is about the same width I'm going to actually be pulling off, so I can write all the way from one side to the other without problems. However, if I'm doing some long set of equations and they're going down and down, I can go over to the side and scroll upwards and just keep on writing and keep on writing. And so I've got effectively an enormous piece of paper to write long complicated equations without having to change pages. OK, so we've got this up now. We then need to start Camtasia, which will actually record what's going on. In Camtasia, click on Record the Screen, and then in the window that comes up, select Full Screen, the Audio, make sure you're picking up the audio from the external microphone. So let's write something. And we can draw equations and whatnot. When we're done, stop. Now let's use Camtasia to edit the result. So we've got the Camtasia window. The recording we've just made is down here and appearing up on the screen over here. You've got a timeline which you can zoom in and out of. The white bumps at the bottom show you how loud the volume is. Most useful for picking out quiet patches that you might want to cut out. If you scroll through, we can see we brought up Sketchbook, played with it, changed the size. and then did various things with it. The first thing you should do is set the pixel resolution to what you want it finally to be, the editing dimensions. So in this case, I've set it to a maximum 720p because that's what I want at the end. This is smaller than the resolution of the entire screen, so it'll cut things off. Now, go to zoom and pan here. Make sure your cursor is at the beginning of your slide and click on the one-to-one -one and that will mean that instead of recording the entire screen, which will be slow for the computer and will cause all sorts of aliasing problems, you're just picking out a correct pixel size, one-to-one -one matched. You can work out where you want to put that. If we scroll through until we get the screen to its final size, we could say move it up like that. And that means it will then record what we're writing on that area you can, let's say you start writing up here and start writing down the bottom, you could drag it around and go somewhere else. And little 
blue arrow will appear here. It's a transition going from one to the other. So it'll move from one place to another. So you can pull out different parts of the screen from time to time if you like. But try and use it most of the time set one to one so that you're going to get the nice crisp images and pixel matching. You can change the audio. I usually find I have to boost the audio slightly, make it a bit louder. Press shift to play. I'm doing some long set of and you can fade in, fade out to tinker with that. You can add other files, uh, move them around, um, split audio and visual. One thing that's important is crimp, uh, short speeding bits up. For example, over here, there's a long silent bit and you can see I was doing some writing. I was writing fairly slowly, so it's legible and that's not something the students will want to watch. One thing you can do is shorten it. So go here, right click, split, go at the end, right click, split, and then here, right click, clip speed, and I usually set it to the highest speed as the allows, 400%, and then bring that along like that. So what you'll now see is, so let's write something. So the writing's much faster. You may also want to cut a bit completely out. So let's say this bit here, nothing much is happening. So we could go to the beginning, split, go to the end, split all, and then just select the middle bit and delete it, and drag the rest over. So this way, if you do something embarrassing or forget something, you can just get rid of it. When you're finished, you need to produce and share. You can send something directly to YouTube, but I normally find it makes more sense to save it onto disk first of all, and then upload that to YouTube. That gives you a bit more control and gives you a backup copy for other purposes. So produce and share. Set the resolution to 720p MP4 only. And it'll give you a directory and a name and then just finish and it will take typically a, a minute or something to render that and produce it as a file which you could then upload to YouTube.